Okay, this is the second part of the semester exam review. This is going to take you through number 65. The last part is optional, and that's just chapter 9 stuff that we had just finished, and I'm not going to re-record that. That chapter 9 portion comes straight from the chapter 9 review. So if you, I'm not going to record that last part, which is uh, six, past 65. You can go to the, um, the chapter 9 review video and watch that. Okay, so we're going to watch our, we're going to check for our extraneous solutions on problems that need to do that and solve these equations. So let's talk about which equations have extraneous solutions, first of all, because you don't need to check everything. Which type of equations have extraneous solutions? Well, those would be ones that have limited domain. <coughs> so if you look back at the first page of this review, you can see that our square root functions here have a limited domain because stuff out here would be would give you an imaginary answer. So square root functions have a limited domain and so if you end up with an answer out here then you'd get something that's imaginary or no solution. Additionally, our logarithmic ones, our logarithmic problems here have a limited domain because we have an asymptote. So logarithmic ones also have a limited domain. So therefore, and the domain of everything else is negative infinity to infinity. It's all real numbers. So therefore, the only type problems that you have to check for extraneous solutions would be for our square root functions and our logarithmic. And so that would be if you have a equation, an, a variable under the square root, like here, number 49 and 50, 51. I think 52 does also. Okay. And then the logarithmic ones are going to be in that chapter 9 section after number 65. Number 46. This one is a quadratic, so I'm going to subtract this 15 over. So I've got my 2x squared plus 7x minus 15 equals 0. So now I have something that I have to factor, and you know you can do that by your guess and check method. If you want to do this by grouping, you want it to multiply to be 2 times negative 15, which is negative 30. Something that combines to give you 7. And so what that ends up being is my positive 10x and my negative 3x. So I'm going to split the middle into 10x minus 3x. I'm going to bring down my ends. Now I have four terms, and with four terms, then I'm going to group them. So I'm going to group this this way. I need to have plus in the middle, so I put a plus there and group that negative with that. So now I pull out my greatest common factors. My greatest common factor here is going to be 2x, which gives me 2x plus 5. I can pull out a negative 3. And that leaves me x plus 5. So therefore, my factors are 2x minus 3 and x plus 5. And so then to solve this, so we're not just factoring, but we're going to solve it. I'm setting each factor equal to 0. So x equals 3 over 2. And on this one, x is negative 5. So those are my two solutions. I don't need to check those because the domain of a quadratic is everything. It's all real numbers, so I'm good there. Okay, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and subtract my term over. And I can see that I have to factor this one by grouping. I have four terms, so I'm going to group it, put a plus in the middle here, take out the greatest common factors. x squared comes out, which leaves me with 2x plus 2. Oh, I should have taken out a 2x squared. See, I noticed I had something left in there that was the same. And so that leaves me with x plus 1 in there. I should take out a minus 8, and that leaves me with x plus 1. So I've got 2x squared minus 8 and x plus 1. So I can see here that I've got x equals negative 1 as one of my solutions. Here, 
we've got 2x squared minus 8 equals 0. And so this is just still another quadratic, which I can isolate. So I can solve that way. So x squared is 4. And so therefore, when I take the square root, x is plus or minus 2. So how many solutions do I have? I have plus and minus 2 and a negative 1. I have three solutions. Remember, our fundamental theorem of algebra says whatever that highest exponent is, that's how many solutions you should have. So with number 48, I would expect to have five solutions. I'm going to start by taking out the greatest common factor, which is 6x. And that leaves me with x to the fourth minus 25. Now, because of this, I have 6x equals 0. So therefore, x is 0 is one of my solutions out of the five that I need to come up with. Now here, this is, yeah, it's really a difference of perfect, perfect squares. I see it as x squared plus 5 and x squared minus 5. And so then that means x squared equals negative 5. When you take the square root, x equals plus or minus i, because of that negative under the square root, square root's a 5. And with this one, x squared equals positive 5, so x equals, take the square root of both sides, plus or minus the square root of 5. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 solutions, and that's what I should have expected. Okay, next, number 49. Now we're getting into a square root equation. And this is one that, now that I have a square root equation, I'm going to have to check for extraneous solutions. So, how am I going to get rid of these square roots? By squaring both sides. So, 4x plus 1 equals x plus 10. And then I can just go ahead and solve with regular algebra from there. Um, you know, subtract your x's. And x is 3. So, I have x as my only solution. I do need to check that. So I'm going to come up here and square root of, I'm just going to kind of put this in in my head, 13, and then that would be 13, so that's all good. That checks out. Okay, next, I see that I have got a square root and a regular number on the left. Now, I can't move that one over. It's not going to do me any good. So I'm going to have to do this squaring as is. So... That means I'm going to have to do this type of factoring here. Square root of 3x minus 8 plus 1 times the square root of 3x minus 8 plus 1. So I'm showing you what's going on here. And then this is left on the right-hand side. What's left on the right-hand side? Okay, so let's FOIL this. So the square root of 3x minus 8 times the square root of 3x minus 8 is... 3x minus 8, a regular old 3x minus 8. And then I've got plus 1 square root of 3x minus 8. Now you should be able to pretty much do this in your head, but I am just going ahead and showing you this out just so that it doesn't seem like this stuff is coming out of thin air. And then we got plus 1. And then I'm bringing down this x plus 5 from before. So I'm going to collect like terms. I've got 3x minus 7. Plus, and then I've got two of these. So now what? I'm going to collect all my like terms together. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. So I've got two square roots of 3x minus 8 equaling negative 2x plus 12. So now what? Don't square yet. Go ahead and divide by this 2. So I've got the square root of 3x minus 8 equals negative x plus 6. Now what? I'm really only about halfway through, and I'm just going to have to go on to this <coughs> other space over here. And I'll have to erase it in a minute. So I've got the square root of 3x minus 8 equals this negative x plus 6. How can I get rid of this square root? The same way we did before. 
by squaring both sides. So this is 3x minus 8 equaling, and I'm going to FOIL this out in my head, and when I FOIL that out, because I'm just trying to save space there, so when I FOIL that out in my head, I get x squared minus 12x plus 36. Now I have something that I can handle. I'm going to subtract this 3, 8, 3x and add the 8 over. So x squared minus 15x plus 44 equals 0. And then I'm going to factor that. It factors as x minus 11 and x minus 4. So x is 11 and x is 4. Now, do I need to check these? Yes, the variables under the square root, so I do need to check them. If you go check that, <coughs> if I put the 11 in, uh, then I'm just going to kind of do this over here. Um, that gave me the square root of 33 minus 8, which is 25. And if I put the plus 1, so that would be 6. And if I put the square the 11 in here, that's the square root of 16, which is 4. And those aren't equal. So 11 did not work. If I put the 4 in, that would be 12 minus 8. And so that's 4 plus 1. So that ends up being 3. And then 4 here, that's 9. That's 3. So 4 did work when I went and checked it after my problem. Okay. So there's all of that. I need to now erase the second half of this problem so that I can do number 51. Okay, so here 51 is going to happen the same way where you have to end up doing the squaring twice. So I'm going to go a little bit faster through this one and skip some steps and not do it as thoroughly. I square both sides. When I square both sides, this becomes 2x plus 5. And the right-hand side, you have to square it and FOIL it out. And it becomes x plus 2 plus 2 of these square roots of x plus 2 plus 1. So that gives me x plus 3 plus 2 square roots of x plus 2, because I combine those numbers together. Okay, so I'm going to subtract this stuff over. So I get x plus 2 equals 2 square roots of x plus 2. And I'm going to divide by 2. So that makes this 1 half x plus 1 equals the square root of x plus 2. And so, now I'm going to go square both sides, and I end up with 1 fourth x squared plus x plus 1, and that equals x plus 2. Combine things together, move it all around and factor, you end up with, um, well you end up with a fourth x squared minus 1 equals 0 when you subtract that over. And so I'm going to add this 1 over. 4th x squared equals 1. Multiply by 4, so x squared equals 4. Then x equals plus or minus 2. So I got my two solutions that I needed. and um, But what I need to do is check them. And when I check them, they actually do both work out. So both of them then are fine for that number 51. Okay, so i got to erase that part that went into that, but that is plus or minus 2 for number 51. Okay, number 52, you're going to square both sides. I'm just going to kind of give you the answer on that one because I'm running really long on our time. That ends up being negative 2.1. Okay, number 53, I you could use long division. I use synthetic division to solve this. It says x plus 4 is a factor. If you want to divide that out by synthetic division, then you have to 
put the solution out here. The solution must go out here. So then I'm going to now synthetically divide. See, I put my coefficients down here. So here I go. Bring down this 3. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. 4 and negative 12 makes negative 8. Negative 4 times negative 8 is positive 32. Combine, multiply, and I get 0. Should I have expected to get 0 there? Okay, so you expected to get 0 because that means it was a solution, and they told us it was, so therefore I know 0 is a solution. Okay, so that leaves me with 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals 0. And then I'm going to factor that. And I don't really want to go through all of the factoring process. You know you need it to multiply to equal negative 9, combine to equal negative 8. I split the middle and I do you do all of that long division or that factoring by grouping. That ends up factoring as x minus 3 and 3x plus 1. Okay, so therefore your solutions are 3 and negative 1 third. Okay, so, <clears throat> so how many solutions do we have? Well, we have this original one that they told us we have, so that's one solution. Our second solution is 3, our third solution is negative 1 third, and that's how many we expected because we have a power of 3. And we don't have to check that. That's just a cubic with a, all real numbers as a domain, so we're all good. Okay, now look at number 54. It says given a 0 is negative 6. Well, what does that mean? That means that negative 6 is a solution. So I'm going to actually put negative 6 out there. And then I'm going to synthetically divide. 3, 19, 4, and negative 12 are my coefficients. Bring down the 3, multiply. Combine, multiply. Combine, multiply. Combine, and it should be a remainder of 0 since they told me that it was a solution. That leaves me with 3x squared plus 1x minus 2. And so then I'm going to factor that. That factors as 3x minus 2 and x plus 1. And so then I know that my solutions are 2 thirds <coughs> and negative 1. Of course, one of the other solutions that was given to me was negative 6. So there are my three solutions. So you include all three solutions because in the fundamental theorem of algebra says we should have three. Okay, so that's the end of that portion. I think I am going to go ahead and stop there and then I'm going to do the um, applications calculator portion with the calculator. Um, as the third recording.